Sup guys, welcome to our video. Today we're talking about Object Oriented Programming or OOP. Don't worry, we'll keep it simple, fun, and straight to the point. Object-Oriented Programming or OOP is basically coding with objects. Instead of drawing data and functions everywhere, you put them inside objects like neat little containers. Why is this important? Because it makes your code way easier to manage, reuse, and maintain. No more spaghetti mess. Think of it like building a car. In OOP, you first design a blueprint, that's the class. Then you create actual cars based on that blueprint. Those are the objects. Then boom! That's OOP in real life. Alright, before we move deeper, let's compare procedural programming with OOP. Imagine you're running a bakery. In procedural programming, it's like using a recipe book. Each recipe is a fixed set of steps. Mix, bake, and decorate. You follow them in order, and if you want a new cake, you write a whole new recipe, even if most steps are the same. It's efficient for simple tasks, but it gets repetitive. Now, switch to object-oriented programming or OOP. Your bakery is full of smart machines. Each one is an object. You've got the mixer, oven, and the cake object. Each knows how to do its job and can be reused. Want a chocolate cake? Just tell the cake object, make chocolate. It automatically calls the mixer and oven. You are not writing steps, but instead, you're orchestrating the behavior. So, procedural is a task focus, do this, do that, while OOP is model focus, build smart parts that works together. Recipe book or smart kitchen, that is the core difference. In code, it looks like this. See that? For every student, you gotta make new variables and repeated print statements. If you had 50 students, you'd rewrite the same thing 50 times. Now, with OOP, it's like running a smart kitchen. You've got a student blueprint, like a cake machine, and every time you need a new student, you just create an object. No rewriting, cleaner, reusable, and no stress. And that's the power of OOP. Alright, now that you've got the idea of what OOP is, let's move on to the basic concepts that make it all work. Let's start with the class. A class basically defines a kind of object. You can think of it as a blueprint. And here's something important. The data type of an object is the name of its class. What's cool about class is that they bring together both the data which are the attributes, and the behavior, which are the methods. In our case, in this example, the student class is the blueprint. It tells us that every student has a name, an ID, and a course, plus methods like display to show their details. But remember, the class itself is just the plan, not a real student yet. Now, once you've got the blueprint, we can actually build real objects from it. That's where objects come in. An object is an instance of a class. It's when the plan becomes something real we can use. In Java, we create objects using the new keyword. Here, we've made two objects, std and std2. Each has its own copy of the data, so changing one won't affect the other. And now, we can actually use them. In Java, encapsulation means bundling data and methods that operate on that data into a single unit, or a class. We keep the data private and expose it through public methods like getters and setters. Like we did on this one, we set our instance variables as private, so its stored data cannot easily be accessed by anyone. As the primary purpose of encapsulation is to boost security, simplifies maintenance, and keeps our code clean and modular. Now, let's say that the student's ID cannot be edited once it has been placed on our object. Notice that the student ID do not have a setter method. That's one way of making the data secure, since having the setter method means that you cannot set or assign any data to that specific variable. Again, 
Encapsulation is like locking your valuables in a safe. You control who gets access and how. In programming, it means you bundle data and methods together while hiding the internal workings to protect integrity and simplify interactions. So, there we go. A class is the blueprint. An object is the actual thing created from that blueprint. And encapsulation is how we protect and control access to the object's data. That's OOP in action. And that's how our student example ties it all together.